everyone. It's the Venus Twins. Welcome. We've got um, some beautiful guests on today. Beautiful Mayanya Starborn and Diane Butler. Um, we would like to introduce them both. Mayanya is a multi-dimensional <laughs> pathways navigator. Now, where do we start even with that? But we will find out and get to the <laughs> to the, to where we need to go. We'll navigate that um, yes. together. And Diane, uh, we were just um, asking before um, about what you do, but we might get you to uh, explain that for us. Welcome. Yeah, welcome, Diane. Give us well your intro. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much for inviting us today. Pleasure. Um, look, my, my whole journey, I guess, you know, I did a lot of work, study, trying to find my spot and what, what I was meant to be doing. But in 2000, I think, is where it all was cemented. And I was called by spirit to go to Wolpina Pound in South Australia. And I tend to bypass my brain and just follow my heart. So I didn't do any research. I had no idea where I was going, what I was doing. But, you know, I went on this journey. And long story short, when I got into the middle of the pound, somehow found myself at this beautiful portal where all of the ley lines apparently it's called grid 44 merged and I was taken into the earth and I sang mm -hmm. so I sang to move the sludge through all time and space the work that the Aboriginal women and many traditional owners of the land have done right across the planet and it wasn't being done anymore by as many people and so I sang and I sang and I sang and songs were brought through and geometries were brought through and that started my journey. And so since that, I've travelled to Peru, to Japan, to Hawaii, to New Zealand, of course, Australia, um, doing that work whenever I've been called. So I'm a sound... I want your job. <laughs> yeah. We're not <laughs> feeling a bit hard done by here because ours is all just here. <laughs> yeah. I want the one where we get to travel all over the world. Yeah, I wouldn't mind <laughs> seeing these incredible <laughs> sacred sites, you know. Yeah. I want to hang out here. And I often, I often get often get calls from beautiful healers in other countries and they'll say, oh, you were with me last night. We were singing and we were doing this and we were doing that. So, you know, a shame I was asleep for most of that. <laughs> but uh, yes. it, it is an exciting adventure. <laughs> yes, singing is um, something that comes very naturally to me. I've always been, I've been a professional singer my whole life and it's the it's something that I, that I very... Um, much uh connect to and um oh it's such a beautiful uh feeling to be able to sing and and heal at the same time I never realized I was actually doing that when I was younger but um now now that I haven't had much time to sing oh, I miss it so much so um and the thing is everybody can heal through their voice through sound through light language if you just trust it and let it through mm -hmm. and and that's pretty much what's happened for me, that it's brought me to the Granite Belt in Queensland, Australia, where in the last 18 months, I just said to my partner, we're moving. And he went, what, are, what on earth are you doing? And we turned up and I got this beautiful property where there's portals and stargates and magic everywhere and merging timelines. I literally saw people drive down my drive and when I went out there they weren't there anymore you know they'd gone somewhere <laughs> and a lot Maya, moment, isn't it? Mm. it so much happening and so Mayanya decided to come and visit me and that was when all the fun began okay <laughs> she was going to stay two but stayed a lot longer <laughs> would, would you like yeah. to comment on that Mayanya well I had um left the central coast to just travel north for a little while and I thought I was going to have a little bit of a break and it was huge work. <laughs> I had three weeks in Ballingen and um, then I headed to Tambourine Mountain and I did a mushroom journey on Tambourine Mountain mm. which connected me into the energy of the dragons under the mountain there and I actually had a conscious birth birthing as a dragon, a baby dragon through the womb of a female dragon with my twin who was actually doing the journey with me. I've got to say that wow. the mushroom is, is the most intelligent being in the cosmos. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, the, I had done ayahuasca a few months before that and 
the ayahuasca, the ayahuasca is um, a, a beautiful, benevolent, cosmic being also, um, really connected into the planetary energy that is um, this organic, feminine, master being. But the mushroom, the way I saw it, was the interconnected. If you think about mushrooms and all of the um, roots that go under the earth, I mean, the mushroom's the bit of the top on the bit on the top mm. that puts out the spores. But there's this interconnected network, a labyrinth of network underneath the planet, and that's all interconnected. Mm. And that is a like a cocoon that wraps around the entire cosmos. It's a communications network. And um, so the mushrooms know everything. They know absolutely everything, and they've known everything from the beginning of the creation of this cosmos. Wow. They're, they're the oldest beings in this cosmos. And how did that connect you to the, the dragons? What is a connection to that? that? So I had, been, um, I had been activating my dragon for um, probably the last two years. I've been working with a woman on the central coast here who's a massage therapist and uh, in, ha, I have a very deep cosmic connection to her and when I was on her table and was in an incredibly relaxed space I would um, start channeling from um, incredible sources about the information that was happening on the planet at the moment and the dragon energies were starting to awaken in my own body so we have dragon DNA in our body mm -hmm. and um, we actually have a dragon entity that is um, has been dormant in our body because it's one of the oldest beings that um, we could say we have recycled bodies through. So at one time we were all dragons mm -hmm. and that DNA is still active in our, well, it's still in our, um, uh, in our physiology, but the dragons went dormant the dragons went to sleep so yes. uh, they go to sleep because they're immortal beings and they're peaceful magical beings they mm -hmm. don't steal babies and steal cows and terrify villages they eat grass they are the magical um component to the human journey they they travel with us they're, they're, they're extraordinary um, in their ability to access magic and actually the, the dragons uh, were originally in the creation of this particular story the dragons were the electrical engineers or the electricians of this galaxy so the, the electricians of the galaxy are very connected to the mushroom which is the interconnected field of communication for the cosmos my, is it too much information? No, no, it's making a lot of sense to me. Yeah. So, um, as the cosmos starts to go, so, you know, we're going through an awakening as above, so below, the microcosm and the macrocosm, whatever's happening here is happening there on every single level. Mm -hmm. And the dragons, which are immortal, they go to sleep at the end of uh, what we would call a thousand year golden, uh, uh, at the end of the golden cycle, which is a thousand years. Mm -hmm. They go to sleep. They literally enter the earth and they they hibernate for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years until the end of that cycle. And then their energy is required again to lift us up into the, the next evolution of our planetary awakening and our own conscious um, evolution as human beings. So right now, they are hugely active. They're active in the mountains. They're active under the oceans. I've been working with a group of women all over the world through, the, through COVID. I met them, and we've been working um, with dragons all over the planet, releasing dragons, activating dragons, and, um, and communicating with them and welcoming them. You could say we're the cosmic welcoming committee for these dragons. <laughs> So nice. well, I have to say, Mayanya, it's so nice to hear you talk about this topic because this has been happening to me in the last month, I think, only. I've been having these dragons introduce themselves to me and meeting. And I think they I've will. met about six now. Yeah. Wow. Ancient, ancient contracts. And um, they are also sovereign beings. So they're from a sovereign hierarchy of cosmic intergalactic family. And mm -hmm. Uh, we're very, very connected to them through our sovereignty, through our DNA, through our blood. 
Mm. So the active um, connection that I had to them through this, this particular journey, the mushroom journey, was this conscious awakening or the birthing of the dragon, um, a baby dragon from the womb of uh, an ancient female and um, the reluctance of, it's a birthing, but it's like a waking up. Mm. You know, you say wake up and rebirth. For the dragon, it's the same thing. I say baby dragon, but the baby dragon uh, in the womb is in a chrysalis. It's not born from an egg. It's born from a chrysalis. And so when a, when a dragon is reborn or wakes up, it has to fight its way out of the chrysalis because through its incubation period, it's also gone through an evolution like a, um, like a caterpillar into a butterfly. So from one form of dragon into a different form of dragon and they just keep evolving and evolving and evolving and evolving and evolving so as I was waking up or as I was being called to wake up I was so reluctant to wake up I didn't want to wake up I was like <laughs> and then my twin was in distress <laughs> she was in distress and she was making this call <laughs> and I had to oh god so I had to help her to wake up and it, and it was like a contraction every contraction I would have to bring my energy to bring her through and I think we're done and then I would rest and then the next level would come and then the next and this went on for six hours and there were levels of awakening through that that was so intense and so putrid and so difficult and challenging and there were other levels that were just electric electrically beautiful and um filled with electric light it was you know it, I think it, that that sounds like our journey like all of us doesn't it that's right, that's now, right. Awakening. some of it's really not fun <laughs> and some right. of it's some is really really challenging and we're going through that now great fields of density mm-hmm. and then other um, fields of just illumination and and receptivity mm-hmm. so yeah. um, when when we finally came through we then realized that we had just gone through the same journey and then we walked out. So that was six hours. And then we kind of did, did a big, big defrag. And then we walked out to make a cup of tea. And Tara, my friend, went to get something from the from where we had been having the journey. And she said, man, come on, come on, have a look at this. Come on, have a look at these satellites. And I kid you not, we were through the journey at this stage. There was no hallucinating going on. We looked up and there were golden orbs blipping in and 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 right in front of us flying in a line like this slowly flipping in and then blipping out with 25 of them and the last one it was so funny it was like it was a little bit late it was a little bit slow and it was trying to catch up it was like a cartoon it was really funny and I said then satellites I said that's a fleet a light ship that's a fleet and I truly felt that this awakening of the dragon energy mm-hmm. was is known from our cosmic counterpart in the galactic um, fleet, and that what we what we received was a flyby. Mm-hmm. We were completely acknowledged for what we had just participated in and allowed. It was the flyby. Oh, mm-hmm. It's great. Yeah. Did you go? <clears throat> yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, because it was it was mind blowing. And if if we hadn't gone down at that time in that moment. We would have missed the whole thing. So there was no coincidence there. They literally mm-hmm. were there for us to see. Um, anyway, after that, and I received a lot of information about the 13 grid system that we're now activating through the human body. The 12 grid system was uh, the Egyptian system. The grid, when I say grid, it's chakra, the chakra system, which is a grid yep. system interconnected into galactic um, system. And um, we're now, the dragon's awakening allow us to connect into their chakra system, which is the 13th uh, chakra system. And as we awaken that 13th point, uh, we start to awaken into the dragon lineages. Um, and the dragon lineages being the most ancient aspect of our magic gives us access to the magic, the power of our true magic. I'm getting goosebumps. Oh, me too. Mm. Uh, and, and accessing mm. that. How um how can you know people who um do you know just out there who like like to learn how to access that how how do they do that and how and how does and how will it help them to access well it's now switched on in the grid it's switched on okay. so because the the dragons are the overseers of the grid system um all of the 
grids that have been inter all of the earth grids that have been interfered with through alien technology and alien um, rods are being pulled out of the grid and the original what we call the Jedi rods which are the ancient technology that are in some of the, dark, the deepest tombs in Egypt where they're finding these massive Jedi pillars now uh, the Jedi pillars are switching on and they connect us into our cosmic true cosmic sovereign lineage because those other rods came down and they blocked the transmission to our true uh, Jedi lineages mm -hmm. and um, um, I was in um, Palm Beach Terry Hills two weeks ago two weekends ago last weekend I could talk forever. There's so much that's it's going okay. on. It's okay. Well, it's very, very interesting. Diane, I'm very aware that you've heard some of this before, so bear with me. Mm -hmm. um, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so just to speak a little bit more about how the technology is, is changing through the awakening of the dragon energy, um, I was called to assist a, a young man who had set up this beautiful new restaurant at Terry Hills, a massive nursery and a beautiful restaurant. And uh, he'd been having trouble with energy, uh, specifically in the kitchen area. So I went through and I could feel this weird energy and I sat down with my friend. And so like there's, you know, 200 people having breakfast in this massive area. And I said to her, oh, can you feel that? We could feel all this nausea in our stomachs as we started to tune in. And uh, she said, what is that? And I said, there's a massive rod that's been inserted into the planet here that's connected to an alien ship. And I said, it's been, it's been um, pulled out right now. And this whole rod was just, so that night, by the way, the night before I'd spent at Palm Beach at my friend's house, I went to bed she said, there were two ships above us last night. Mm. We saw two spaceships. And I had a really weird night where I couldn't wake up. They kept pulling me back down into all these different timelines and different dimensions. Yeah. And so woke up it was like holy crap that was so hard to get out to get here mm. because you have to do it from a different timeline <laughs> you have to actually jump timelines and wake up in a different timeline go to sleep that night go back into the same timeline so mm. we went into a future timeline to be able to pull that grid out right. um, where we had access to it and then with that night she had a really crazy night and if that happened to me because then we arrived back in our Timeline. So we're jumping timelines all the time, especially those of us who are very cosmic who have access to multidimensional pathways. Yes. So we've been doing that as well, but actually not that realizing it. Yeah. Um, until yeah. We've been made look, if you realized it, you'd think you were going mad. You'd yeah. Yeah. We have been going mad a bit. Yeah. <laughs> we are mad, aren't we? <laughs> Got to be a little bit crazy to take these assignments. So, um, this is so really good to hear. As they did that, as the ships, the two ships above us from the night before, um, pulled up this artificial intelligence rod that was blocking the um, the the was creating inter interference patterns in the grid in the earth, one of the dragon lines. Um, it then disempowered seventeen other. Uh, uh, 17 of those rods that were stuck in grids all over this planet so oh all God. over this continent we're just doing Australia at this stage so all of those rods came up and um, it's not that the the original Jedi pillars have to come back down they were always there but they their their harmonic if you like has been interfered with to create a disharmonic so now they're all back fully online and in harmony now the interesting thing about this is that the codes that I have that I had drawn, which were the new blueprint for the human genome, that I had um, anchored physically, I'd, so I'd anchored the geometry through my body and drawn it energetically, and then we had anchored it at Diane's property on the planet, like on the um, the granite belt there, all with crystals, all with this amazing labyrinth energy spiraling. And that was all after we, I had done a tea, shop, a tea party up there and it was all about dragons. So it's like, you can't make this stuff up. You can't, you can't look back down the timeline and go, yes, I planned that because it, you, you couldn't plan it. It's too <laughs> random. It's too, it, it is like, really oh good. my God. Um, so that but that, that, that I had anchored. So Diane? Go ahead, Diane. Oh, I was just going to say that that even, Two years ago, 
you know, I didn't know anything about dragons. And I suddenly went to a circle and a lady said to me, do you know you're carrying a dragon egg and have for a long time and it's time? And I just looked at her and went, well, I didn't, but thank you. Not a clue what she meant. And then I was, I had bought a property up near Bundaberg and we went up there camping and we decided that we wanted this property down here. And um, I had had 30 days to basically sell where I was to move, to do everything. And my partner, Bruce, because we, we do the music together, he started to play his guitar around the campfire. And I was literally taken into the tree, met by all these beings where I handed over an egg or a chrysalis mm -hmm. <laughs> and came out from that and the phone rang and he said, that'll be an offer on the house, everything's going through now. And it was exactly that. He told me the amount that was going to be offered. <laughs> so I just accepted it. We bought it. We came here and, um, you know, it was, all, it was all a bigger picture to me. I had not a clue. And also wow. um, right at the start in, in COVID, I got called to go to Western Australia and do some sound work over there. And I literally just skirted in around the lockdowns and the this and the that and getting there and getting back and, and everything. And when I was over there, I thought, well, I have to sit on the beach somewhere and watch a beautiful sunset from this side of Australia. Totally. And <laughs> started to sing and three dragons were birthed right there in front oh of me. I saw that. How so, you know, I just came back going, what, what on earth? <laughs> what does that feel like to see a dragon being birthed? Oh, it was well, magical, absolute you magic. You should feel it. It's just, yes. I remember at one yep. stage of that journey birthing, I, I remember saying to myself, I thought we promised ourselves we would never do this again. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew that we had done it billions of times. Goodness billions, me. Of, billions of cycles, billions of births, billions of evolution. But that's what we do. We birth our energy through the earth. We birth our energy for humanity. We birth our energy through the grids to enable the upgrades of consciousness because these are consciousness grids, obviously. That's why they're blocked. Mm -hmm. um, by the alien technology so um and there are many people throughout the world doing this right now too oh, that, yeah. that mark oh, yeah. Atwood recent interview that he told us to have a look at yeah uh, where he was in ireland and they went to that stone circle um that was amazing too i just watched that mm. on the weekend and they found all these stones around the outside of this stone circle that had been placed there to disrupt the grid um to you know turn the yeah. power into evil not yeah. good and they, they can they siphon the power off mm. and they can then use that that energy because it's consciousness energy to distort our consciousness because we are as um as bio mechanisms of this earth our very bodies have those grids inside them so if they access the master grid they can um siphon the energy from the master grid they can run interference patterns and they can control our consciousness essentially so the consciousness isn't really controlled from out there it's controlled from down there mm -hmm. and that's why the um the dragons are such an instrumental part in this because they can't control the dragons the wow. dragons are older than them the dragons are Thank uh, goodness. Infinitely older, infinitely wiser, and they're a part of the creation energy of the cosmos. Mm -hmm. So the the dragons always know when to come. Yes, and there are many of us who uh, who are born from dragon lineages. That's our sovereignty. And um, actually, my Chinese astrology is dragon as well. So, <laughs> so that's it's beautiful. Interesting. It's interesting. You go well. That that's weird. Um, <laughs> but but back to the Back to this, uh, just the end part of what happened with the, the pulling out of the alien rods, um, and that happened sev to 17 um, obstructions all over the planet. All of a sudden, they were pulled out. That's why the ships were there. 
and the dragons were working actively as well. So it's the activation of the dragon body that enables us to be able to do this work here on the planet. It has to be done on the planet. I was, can, gonna, I was going to say, why why do they need people um, like star seeds, like the two of you, to to help them birth? Because um, we have the the dragon the dragon sovereignty within our DNA. We're dragons. Okay, so, so we're part of them. The dragons. <laughs> Only the dragons can um, activate or deactivate the grid. Got it. And, uh, yeah. And we had gone through uh, at our tea party. We had activated the thirteen um, chakra system through a circle of seven, um, which had grounded the dragon lineage through that circle and uh, which had effectively given us um, authority, I won't say permission, but authority to do the work that we came here to do. It always has to be grounded through the physical. So, um, but the story then gets a little bit even better, if I can say. So, <laughs> so as we- <laughs> Better than that. <laughs> And it just shows you how connected we are. As we were actively enabling these ships to dismantle the alien technology so the original resonance was able to um, um, be in harmony again and mm. play again through the earth, I watched that grid, and this goes back to your question, Claire, how do people turn that grid on? I watched that grid, that blueprint, which is a generic, key to a Jedi pillar activate in every single person sitting in that restaurant. That's every wow. single person, it switched on. Mm -hmm. And um, as that switched on, that then did all of this work. Now, that switching on, you know how our original oil activated a field of protection that was um, 45 kilometres wide. Yes, this was Mayanya's oil that um, was a harmonic oil. There was many different... Um, yeah, activated the cosmic of... armour through COVID that enabled us to um, repel the uh, energies that were trying to infiltrate our field. Yes. Disempower us. And in the activation of our field, we also affected everybody else's field in a harmonious way within a 45-kilometre uh, 45 um, area. The area of our aura so these um grids when they switched on with all those people having their you know smashed avocado on toast and all oh the other God. beautiful things um <laughs> the grid switched on and and it just went it was there was like this boom for nine kilometers around us um the whole area was saturated with the field of that energy switching on and that energy switched on in every single person within nine kilometers. And now when they walk that out, that switches on, that switches on, that switches on, that switches on. Okay. So if a person in the nine kilometer area of Terry Hills gets on a plane and flies to Singapore, they switch that grid on for nine kilometers and in everybody else for nine kilometers. It just continues on. Ripple the ripple. Ripple. Continues continues. ripple effect. Brilliant switching on the generic key and uh, the generic key is literally what unravels all of this alien technology. Hooray! Uh, Bring that yeah. so We're all doing it. We're all doing it. But if everybody had the information, A, it's too much information to be able to even um, interpret and it could make you feel like you're going a bit mad. So it's all done with the greatest ease and grace and that's how mm -hmm. Diane does, you know, that's a she does all this beautiful work for spirit. She says, but ease and grace, ease and grace. And I'm like, ease yeah. and I don't do it hard. Ease and grace all the way. <laughs> I like those two words as well. So yeah. tell us more about what you do, Diane, as well. Yeah, I'd love to hear about your the tones you use with your singing and, and how that works and anything. Look, I, you know, I was saying to Mayanya, it's really funny. When I, the very first time I realised that I sang and, you know, was helping the earth and the planet was in 2000 at Wilpena Pound and it was beautiful it was like this haunting etheric sounds that you know I didn't think were coming from me <laughs> and I watched the sludge and everything move and I it was just gorgeous then I was called a few years later 
to go to Lake Tarpo in New Zealand. And so I just, you know, if, if I'm guided, I just trust and I off I go. I didn't tell anyone I was going. And I went over and I found Lake Tarpo and I sat myself down thinking, oh, something beautiful is going to come out. And it, they were the ugliest sounds I've ever heard. They were guttural <laughs> sounds and all this stuff. And, I, I, you know, I'm thinking, oh, gosh, lucky. No, I didn't tell anyone and no one's with me. But <laughs> before me, I saw these pillars being created over, you know, like a temple created over the lake and this grid system. And it was quite exquisite. Anyway, I once I'd finished, I dusted myself off and thought, right, I'm, I'm losing my, the plot now. I'm, I'm not telling anyone I did this. I'm going home. And I, I was on the central coast in New South Wales down at the entrance and a Maori lady actually came up to me, tapped me on the shoulder and said, excuse me, I've got a message that I need to, to give to you. And I kind of looked surprised and said, for me, and she said, yes, um, you completed the work that had been started eons ago and Spirit wants to thank you. And so at that moment I decided was- I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to let my wounded ego stop me from, you know, if I'm guided, just trust. I don't need spirit getting people to run around telling me that I'd done an okay job or I, I'd listen. So that's kind of been my journey now. So if I just feel I've got to stop and sing, I just stop and sing. Pretty, not pretty, on the note, off the note. It no. is what it is. So and, you, you know, like what? You call it singing, but is it light language? Are you sitting down and doing light language? Light, yeah. light language tones. Sometimes there's words in a song. Can you give us a no demo? right or a, <laughs> a demo? Sometimes it's hard when you're singing to be put on the spot, but it's mm. you don't have um, to. I, I, just, I don't know. It was, it was like when I, I went to Hawaii to um, Kauai, we had to move a light city from Peru. We had to shift cities around because there was some stuff going on and we were about hiding it. <laughs> And it was that same thing. I had to sing. The lady that was facilitating it, who I thought was this amazing, wonderful person, she would go, oh, die, and they're saying sing now, like on the spot. And I just opened my mouth and out came, I guess it was a Hawaiian, I don't know, it was beautiful light language. And the other workers there said the minute I did it, it was like the keys. They could then go in, split timelines, select what they needed, get the files, shift things around. So it just happens. So it's different every time. But, yeah, I just... That was just, you know, we're all in a bubble of love. So. <laughs> but, you know, it's different. It's different every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's kind yeah. of what I do. It's tailored to what is required. It's beautiful. Exactly. There's no no rules, none. Would, would you like to um, tell everybody what your website is, Diane, so they can see what more of what you do? Oh, yes. It's very not up to date, my website, but that is my next month. That, that's my job, the March job, <laughs> is to get it up to date. But it is about, um, it at the moment, it reflects when I lived over near Bribie Island. We've just, we've been here renovating, getting set up, and my plan is to create a space where people can come um, to be held and nurtured in these energies. This earth, the earth here is so strong. To walk the grid that Mayanya and I created is so powerful. You know, it's like you're walking your galactic blueprint and calling in whatever it is that you need. The dragon energy is here. Um, I've got a little creek that sometimes runs and when it runs, I go and sing with that water so it will go wherever it needs to go. And it's it's so powerful. I said to Mayanya, I feel like I need to put a, a thing on the gate that don't enter unless you're willing to do the washing up because if there's <laughs> stuff there, it's going to come up to you and if you can't do the work or ask for help, then, you, you know, an ant's going to bite you or a wasp's going to sting you or, or whatever. It, <laughs> it's pretty powerful stuff. Sounds so, like a um, powerful piece of land you've got yeah. there. <clears throat> very, very, feel very, very honoured to be a caretaker for this space. So honoured, and so that's what we've been doing. And when Mayanya said, "Oh, you know, I'm I'm over on the Gold Coast, and I'll come over for a couple of days," uh, I went, "Oh, let's have a tea party, let's play," <laughs> and then everything else just unfolded so much so that she was going to leave, um, and she fell and hurt her wrist, and we thought it was a break. 
So we took her to the hospital, have x-rays, and the doctor even said, it's a maybe break. You need to stay another week and we'll x-ray it again. <laughs> so she got to stay another week. And it wasn't a break at all. Mm. Never heard of a maybe break. Yeah. Heard of a, a maybe break. break. That bloody hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it was in that week that we created the grid. Wow. So, oh, the grid, yeah. So they just, kept me, yeah. they just kept me there for another week because the work hadn't been done. So. <laughs> oh, the dragons. Yeah, I'd love to learn more about the dragons. If I want to have my session with you, um, Mayanya, I'd love to uh, experience and connection or work out. Well, I can show you the image that came through after, I think it's here, because I downloaded pretty well at Tambourine Mountain the whole sequence for unraveling through the cocoon and um through the cocoon sequence so yeah, he's a beautiful artist as well mm. and draws beautiful a, that is so beautiful mm. so that's the sequence of unraveling through the through the 13 chakra system um mm. and you don't go you don't just go from the bottom to the top now <laughs> the other reason that i had to stay there for the extra week is that um Diane and I had to write a song about this whole thing, which we did. Oh, because, yes, you were going to tell to play that. Uh, has a, a beautiful, um, he's a beautiful musician and he has a little recording studio. So we spent the week really, well, it was two weeks because from the time that it came in with the, with the, um, with the tea party, um, and that in itself was the most extraordinary unraveling that came through the tea party to <laughs> that 13 system and then all the words that came through everybody at the tea party that created the foundation for the words for the song and um it, the song is so powerful i mean you know if diane and i had had another week in a professional studio yeah, we, we would have polished it we would have really <laughs> but um it, do you have a it, copy it, of it or do you am um, able to play it it's actually on um, Spotify, but uh, uh, we released it onto Spotify. It's called um, The Time of Power, and it's under the Songdala, Songdala. label. And oh, we'll, we'll put the link underneath this video, everyone, mm -hmm. so everyone can let, find it and play it. It's not, you know, studio perfect. It's just us in the backyard studio. Uh, and I decided... That any any off notes and things, somebody obviously needed that. So you know, it's perfect. <laughs> I wish I wouldn't have been so hard on myself during my professional singing years. I would have used that. Yeah. That, that, yeah. <laughs> somebody needed it. Somebody needed a grinding note. I like your philosophy, Diane. <laughs> Me too. Great so word. Also the song is a transmission of the power that's coming through the sovereign awakening. Um and the roles that the dragons play and how we're all being asked to rise up. We every, are. every nation, rise up. It's the time of power. And that, you know, it starts in the heart, this, this field that is the heart, and that we rise together through the energy of the heart. And, and um, together is we'll, the key word, isn't it? It is the key word. Uh, mm. Like so many of us are coming together in groups. It's, you know, for us, we're always being told that together we are so much more powerful working together and they, our guides will often want us to do things together because we have a much better result that way. And there are lots of groups and councils and, you know, lots of, um, yeah, groups of people that are doing incredible things together and they're so powerful together. Well, yeah, think not doing things singularly anymore. It's like well, come community, come unity. Come together. Yeah, <laughs> uniting. If you think about the, the most intelligent beings on our planet, the most ancient races are the, um, are the uh, insect beings. So, are they? Really? Didn't well, know. Royal. You, you look at how they can create, oh, the, how they can access a, 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 a mind that is invested in the protection and the... And um, the outcome of the oh, good for all. Yeah, the good for all. I mean, there has about. I mean, they don't have a human mind where they don't have a unified, you know, a singular consciousness. They have a higher consciousness, mm -hmm. but they're a, they've developed um, this ability through their. They're very ancient. The grasshoppers, the ants. They're the they're 
they're, they're the, the most ancient. I had a, I had a, um, a moment on my massage uh, therapist's table because it does my back and then I flip over and then bang, it all happens. And in the room standing beside her was a nine foot tall grasshopper. Magnificent being. He had this long rod. And I was like this, I was in another body. I was on what looked like a crystal med bed and I was really long and I had this kind of long head and I was all dressed in like a white suit. And Anna, my massage therapist, was at my feet doing work at my feet and regulating the med bed. Behind her was the grasshopper. And up on the left, on a kind of a diet, was this huge ant being. And he was just kind of sitting there watching like this. He, you know, really would like him. He was watching the whole thing. And um, <laughs> said something. He said, oh, that's right. So this was all going on. There in, in the corner, there were four or five, a collection of other beings. Like they looked like little blue Ted Kelly tubbies. But I, I realized that they were just a bit masked. They didn't want to show us who those beings were. But they were Kelly tubbies. So they were friendly and they were non-threatening. And... Um, so we we're obviously on a ship and this ant being who's watching things and he just leans down and he says to me, he says to me, oh, before that happened, the big grasshopper. I said, Anna, he's got this really big staff and he's about to touch you on the left shoulder. He touched her with the staff on the left shoulder. This bolt of electricity went through her. This bolt of electricity went through me and we went, holy for Jesus. I mean, <laughs> really happened that was a massive bolt mm -hmm. and then the ant being is sitting there and he says he says we just want to thank you for being here with us and not being away could you say that again i didn't hear you we just want to thank you for being here with us and for not being afraid of us oh, so we've lovely. also got this thing with insects mm -hmm. we have to kill them whether they're a threat where they're they're not a part of our world we've got to get rid of them you know kill the pest kill the pest mm -hmm. they're an integrated part of our planetary consciousness yes apparently it's great grasshopper mating season at the moment i was uh, i found out yesterday mm -hmm. um which i thought was interesting that that's just <laughs> hmm. they have a little orgy uh, in the year, do they? <laughs> well yeah and that's what this gentleman said and um i said oh I'll Best we stay out of their way then. <laughs> There's been lots of dragonflies at it too. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's all, they're all, it's, it must be all part of it. Mm, so we had a mass catching of dragonflies here uh, where I live about a week ago. There were thousands and thousands and thousands of them. Yeah. I hadn't seen cool. Do you have any, uh, have you seen anything on the um, internet lately about how a lot of the, um, uh, animals are forming lines, straight lines, and have you seen any of that lately? And um, what's all going in, going yeah, going in circles? Oh, going in circles, mm. yeah. And I see them as where they're all standing in long lines, cows, and what's all that about? Well, again, I think it has to do with magnetic grids. Yeah, because, right. Okay. Um, because animals, migrating animals, are following ancient pathways that are magnetic grids that guide their interior navigation systems to their migration places, whether they're whales or birds. And then when those grids go out of whack, then their inner navigation systems go off and they end up beaching on the, you know, the whales beat, the birds fall out of the sky. So mm -hmm. I, again, it's a shift in the magnetic grid um, lines because there's so much going on with the grids at the moment. As yes. And being rewired. A lot of cosmic rewiring going in in the earth and in our body. So how do we stay grounded, man? You and Diane, how how do we how do we keep ourselves sane throughout this time? Because it really has been a bit difficult lately. Mm. Well, by now, you know, we get here. You should have done your work. Mm -hmm. you, you should have done your work to be able to see that your mind is not you. That it's a tool that we're given to use, and it's a tool that can be infiltrated because it's um, a part of an integrated system of technology. I mean, where does thought come from? Where does it go to? So if they can infiltrate earth grids, which affect our consciousness, they can also infiltrate individual um, mm. uh, mind grids, if you like, to yes. 
those voices in people's heads or to do that. So, you, I mean, you're a, the reason that there's been so much talk leading up to COVID about mindfulness and meditation and self-awareness was to get us into a place where, um, for example, at the beginning of the mushroom journey, the voice of myself said to me, no matter what happens, I am here. So you always come back to the source. Oh, good thing. You always come to the source here that is not really affected by whatever that play is out there. Because mm -hmm. um, that play is just a heck of a trip and it's changing all of the time. And that can be put into the mind. And that can create confusion. And um, as Diane was saying, you know, you don't let the little ego get in the way anymore. You just follow the voice of your heart and you do what you have to do because that's what you're here to do. Um, so you yep. stay in nature, you walk bare feet on the ground, you anchor into the magnetic um, <clears throat> grids of the planet that are aligned to your magnetic grids, balanced and wired and really tuned into the toroidal field, your toroidal field then connects into the Earth's toroidal field. So you anchor into the bigger grids that are not affected by the distortion the distortion in the technology um, and you ground through nature. Yeah, that's one of the best ways, drinking lots and lots of water because our water bodies are the conductors of the energy <laughs> that you know, we're in an upgrade and that's all electromagnetic fields that are upgrading and being rewired and new programs being downloaded and the um, conductor for that is the water. Mm -hmm. So water making sure that you're hydrated. If you're dehydrated, you're going to really struggle, really, really struggle. Yeah, that's really, really good advice. Thank you. It's so also good. having a glass of water before you go to bed and put your prayers into it, your thoughts, your intentions, healing, keep me grounded. Um, it's all about frequency, you know, raising my frequency, staying in those upward spiralling emotions. And when the others come, forgiving yourself, letting them go. It's like in my world, it's ease and grace, ease and grace all the way. Love that. <laughs> yes. Love it. Yes. You're sovereign. The sovereign is the ruler. You're the ruler of your realm. Your realm is your yes. world. I am sovereign um, integral is what is on the back, on the back mm, of your oil mm, written. I love that. So the, and sovereign integral is the integrate, is the true integrity of the sovereign ruler. So if you go back to the pharaohs of old, they were true rulers sovereignty they were wisdom beings they um were able mm. to well they were enlightened so it's the uh, sovereign integralism the enlightened mm. now just to remind you though that you know we think about enlightenment there's there's never really anywhere to get to because we're continually evolving so don't ever think oh when i'm enlightened i'm going to get there or i'm awake there are many levels of awakening um i always i always um show this by you know just looking at a flower that the seed is awake and when the seed sprouts it's awake and when the seed has and when the sprout has leaves it's awake and when the when the plant comes up the bud it's awake but they're all new levels of awakening and yeah. then the whole thing bursts open and it's an incredible euphoric level of awakening and then it releases its scent and then it's another level and then the bees come and they make honey and that's another level and, it, and then it dies and then it does it again and then it dies and, then, and it's a different season and a different world every time it does that. And that's what we do. We just do this again and again and again and again and again. A billion times the dragon has the a billion times. Mm. That's just beautiful. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. And so yeah. when, you, when, I, when I've had sessions with Mayanya over the years, we'll talk like this about, but about other different things and sometimes to do with our own personal experiences and and she will draw a code often and with and it's just the most powerful thing and it's helped me so much uh, over the past 10 years and um just look so at drawing a code for this session oh, i thought you may have i thought you may have been doodling Great. it's not doodling it's way way more beautiful than that <gasps> wow oh my goodness that looks complex <laughs> it look at that it's absolutely um mm -hmm. beautiful now i haven't interpreted it obviously I just, but if you look at right at the top, just look at right at the top. See that? It looks like a little bird. See it? Yes. Yep. Yep. And from this little bird, 
is just all this energy and the bird is has the song and the song is the music and the music is what we transmit and so it's the mm -hmm. of our soul's voice and that's what diane does when she sings she transmits the power of her soul's voice and it and it has the power to to create worlds you know well, next and, time i'm down at my special place which is near the water on the water i'm going i'm you inspired me diane mm. <laughs> Things. I might just try and tap in and see what needs to be done down there. Mm. Beautiful. Just send your love through the water. It will take it where it needs to go. It's perfect. And Mayanya, I love that because the temple space is officially now called the Songbird Temple. Oh, that's <laughs> gorgeous. Yeah, great. <laughs> ladies. Mm. Wow. Well, should we finish up there for today? The wrap. Yeah. Thank Wonderful. you. Thank you for your time. I'm You're both just, inspirational and yeah. doing beautiful work for the planet and for all of humanity. So we thank you and thank you, thank you, to chat with you. Love you, Diane. Yeah, thank you, Diane. It's such a joy thank to you. today. You're beautiful, and mm. we can't wait. To... If you're ever up here, come and visit. Oh, oh yeah, love to. absolutely, <laughs> we will. And uh, come and walk the grid. If anyone would like to, would, Manuel, would you like us to put your um, details underneath the video as well? If anyone would like to. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I do. Um, I'm heading off to New Zealand to do um, some big work in New Zealand in April. And um, I'm staying there for a kind of indefinite time. So I'm getting ready to leave Australia for a little while. Mm -hmm. But I do Zoom sessions and I put my Zoom back in London. And, and I, um, I credit Mayanya with helping, you know, helping me through one of the darkest times of my life. And uh, so she she really is uh, very, very, very um, good at what she does. And uh, I can't really put it into words. It's so, so beautiful and deep. And I'm forever grateful to you. I'm looking forward to my next one coming up yeah, short, no, short. Totally. No, honestly. I'm here to help in any way. In any way that I can, I'm here in service. So thank you, ladies. Thank you so much for your time thank today. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to chat with Thanks, you, Brian. Bye, darling. Thanks for coming Be on. Be beautiful. Bye. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. See ya.